Welcome to Creations by In Him. I am your host, Dr. Dolores Jones. Wow, once again, because of the Word of God, we're in for another wonderful treat. Thank you so much for taking the time to view uh, this program, and we know that you will not be disappointed. We're going to talk again, which a little earlier I had opportunity to share this particular subject matter, but it's so good, I think I'm going to share it again. And we're talking about trust God. What does it mean to trust God? Ah, I'm so glad you asked. What does trust actually mean? Well, according to Webster's Collegate Dictionary, it means assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. Hallelujah. One in which confidence is placed. Let's turn in the word of God. Let's look at Proverbs number 3 and verse 5 and 6. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I thank God to be able to learn how to trust in him, to give it over to him, family. Oh, it makes all the difference. You don't have to be all... Um, uh, tore up and, 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 and bogged down with the different situations and circumstances in everyday life, which we all are confronted with different situations and circumstances just because we are here. We are here in the natural and in this every uh, day uh, nitty gritty humdrum world. But thank God that we can find out what the Word of God says and learn how to activate the Word of God in our personal lives every day and no matter what we are going through. And learning how to take the scriptures and to commit the Word to remembrance so that we have that communication and fellowship with the Heavenly Father so that we can give His Word back to Him. Actually, that's what prayer is all about is praying the word of God. And he is the one that said, once you do that, he will confirm his word with the signs following, because that's the kind of God that we serve. Over in, let's turn now to 2 Peter. 2 Peter, and we're going to look at 2 Peter chapter number 1. It's so important to learn what the word of God says, because that way, once we learn his word, then that enables him because he is a faithful God. He's, he's not a God that he lies, and he will bring it to pass in your life. According to 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, let's look at number, verse number 3. And it says, as his divine power has given to us all, A-L-L, things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him, who called us by glory and virtue. So these things, uh, family, he's already given to us. He's already made the provision for us. But that's why we have to get in the word. It says search the scriptures. It does tell you that. Because in them you will find what this is about eternal life. He says to search it. Well, that means it's not going to happen by osmotic, osmosis. That means I've got to apply myself. I've got to do something because he tells us to be the doer of the word of God and not just the hearer only. That means we've got to have corresponding action, Jackson. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's so wonderful and it's so simple. Then you have to understand that God's word we will never understand the word of God with the natural understanding. God's word is spiritual. Uh, turn with me to 1 Corinthians. And we'll look at chapter 2. 1 Corinthians and 2. And like I said, it's so important to know what the Word of God says because that is the confidence that once we have asked him there again, he will confirm his Word with the signs following. 2 Corinthians uh, 2 and let's see, we want to look at number 14. 
verse 14, it says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Just what I had stated. So you're not going to understand the Word of God with your natural understanding. That's why I'm a, a, a stickler for always reminding one that that's the, why the importance of the message of faith is to be taught because that's how we have to learn to walk through what God's Word says. Uh, while you're in Corinthians, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians and chapter number 5. And let's look at number 7, verse 7. It says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, when it comes to the word of God, one has to turn off sense knowledge evidence. Well, what am I saying? What you can see, feel, hear, touch, and taste. When it comes to the word of God, uh, it has nothing to do with the sense knowledge evidence. It's what one believes and confesses according to the word of God. Then the Lord is the one who said, I will confirm my word with the signs following. Now you can understand why it's so important that you are the one that has to get the word of God. It's not going to just happen by osmosis. Then that's how prayer is established. You begin to, to uh, read the word, give God his word back to him, and that's your assurance, that's your confidence in the word of God that God will confirm his word with the signs following because that's how he operates. That's how he's made it. So we have to do it his way and not our way. <laughs> and that's why sometimes we say, well, it doesn't work. It works, but you got to work it his way. And you have to understand, like I said, that God is a faithful God. He will bring it to pass. He is a God of his word. He will do all, A-L-L, -L, that his word says he will do, all that we will believe and confess in line with his word. Then he said, I will confirm my word with the signs following. That is so awesome. It's so wonderful to know that we can depend on this kind of a God. And he is concerned uh, for us, about us, in every area and every aspect of our lives. However, he's a God. He will not force his way into our lives. But when we say, Father, I need your wisdom. I need your, your guidance. I need your direction. He's right there. He wants to assist you. And when you say that, is on. Hallelujah. Turn with me um, to the book of Numbers. Uh, let's see, Numbers, chapter number 23, and let's look at verse number 19. It says, God is not a man that he should lie. Hello. I'm going to read that one again. God is not a man that he should lie. See, God, our, our Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, is not a liar, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Oh, then he says in verse 20, Behold, I have received a command to bless. Woo, glory to God. He says, Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has already past tense blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Ooh, let me read that one again. It says, Behold, I have received a command to bless, family. Then he says, I have blessed, past tense, it's already done, and I cannot reverse it. That's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of God we serve. That's why it's so important for us to get involved in this work, to find out what he's already provided for us. That's why if you don't know that, then there's nothing that he can work out in your life because he's only going to confirm what his word says. Hallelujah. Woo, you go, Jesus. That's what we're talking about. In all actuality, if it's not about him, it's not about nothing. Excuse my good English. 
That's why, like I said, we got to do things his way. And then when we begin to do that, when we will, when we surrender and want to do it his way, then that makes a life a lot easier. And we all are confronted because we're in this earth realm. And we are in a spiritual warfare. We have an enemy. His name is Satan. He is the God of this world, okay? The, the, the word reminds us, according to John 10 and 10, he's the thief. He says in, in John 10 and 10, the thief comes not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's his game. That's his plot against the children of God. That's why you have to find out what you have, what God has already provided for you. Find out that the authority that he's already given you, I said use it or lose it. That's in your hands. So if you do nothing with it, excuse my good English, ain't no happenings. Hello. But once you find out what the word says, then you petition the father. Your word says, blah, blah, this, that, and the other, daddy. So I'm trusting you. Trust God. I'm committing my situation into your hands. I thank you that I know you have my well-being at hand. And I give you the praise. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. And I thank you for confirming your word in my life at this time with the signs following. Hallelujah, because that's the kind of God we serve. Oh, he's an awesome God. He's a loving God. He, he, and there again, he's concerned about every area, every aspect of your life. But we have to will to do it his way. Hallelujah. L let's look at, uh, while we've just gone through numbers, go over to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. And uh, we'll look at... Um, Chapter number 30, Deuteronomy 30. I tell you, the word of God is so good, it's so awesome, and it's life-changing. But if you don't know that, if you don't take the time to get into it, you'll never find it out. And that's what the enemy wants you not to get into the word of God, so that you will have, you, you'll miss out on all the goodness and the blessings that God has already prepared for those who love him. Deuteronomy 30, 19, verse number 30, uh, 19. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, what's it there for? Choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, that you may cling to him, for he is your life and length of your days, that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. So he's already set before us these blessings in life, and he tells us what to do. Choose life. Understand that God is all about life. It's the enemy, Satan, the God of this world, that's about death. That's the difference. God is all about life. He said, I've come that you might have life, not death, but you might have life and have it more abundantly. The devil is a lie. So you have to find out what is there available for you as his child. And hallelujah. And that's why we have to, to uh, uh, renew the mind, your mind, according to what the word of God says. Let's look at um, Romans chapter 12, book of Romans. And so this is what we have to do in order for the word to work in your life. I have to do the same thing. We all have to do the same thing. We all deal with the same dumb enemy. <laughs> and you have to let him know that he's not running nothing up in here in the name of Jesus. You got to go in the name of Jesus. I'm not accepting it. I'm not putting up with it. Now get out of here in Jesus' name. So you have to learn that God has given you authority. See, if you don't know that, then you, you can't use that as your defense. And that's why the enemy will try to come in and run havoc in your lives because you do not know what the word says or how to trust in the Lord. No, I can't see him in the physical. That's all right, but I can trace him through what his word says. Romans 12, look at number one. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, 
holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable or rational service. And do not, do not, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we have to get this mind trained and reacclimated to the word of God. Because when it comes to the word of God, there again, as I had stated, you have to turn off sense knowledge evidence, what I can feel, hear, see, touch, and taste. It comes, it, it, you have to say, I believe what the word of God says, and I thank you, Father, for confirming your word in this situation with the signs following. You have a, you want to know, you have a question, you have a decision. You don't know exactly which way to go with this decision. Then you pray and you ask the Father, Father, what move should I make? What step should I take? Then you get quiet and then you listen down on the inside. And God, when he gives an answer and when he's in that, and you will have the perfect or complete peace of God. He says in John 14 and 27, peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He reminds us over in Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer. Make your request made known unto God. Why, God? And then number seven says, and the peace, ooh, the peace of God that passeth all understanding will guard our hearts and minds. I tell you, and I've said it before, if we could bottle up peace and sell it, we'd all be billionaires because that's what everyone, the world is looking for, peace. Well, I'm here to tell you the true peace is only going to come from the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, peace I give to you. He's already given it to us. All we have to do is receive his peace, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Oh, it's, oh, it's so awesome. It's so wonderful. His peace. Oh, my goodness. Turn with me to um, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. Oh, yes, nothing like the peace of God. And family, what's so wonderful is free. <laughs> All you have to do is receive it. He's already made it available. Let's look at number three, Isaiah chapter 26, verse number three. You will keep him in perfect, or in other words, complete peace. Ooh, glory. Yes, whose mind is stayed on you. Why? <laughs> because he trusts in you. Then it says, trust in the Lord forever. Hallelujah. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Trust God. I don't know how, how this is going to work out, but I'm not going to be frustrated and trying to even figure it out. He told me to give it to him, to cast the whole care on him. In 1 Peter 5 and 7, which tells us casting all, all your care on him, all your worries, all your all concerns, whatever it is that you're dealing with in life. Give it to the Father by faith. Release it. Father, here's the situation. By faith, I release it to you in the name of Jesus. Now, I thank you for working it out. I thank you for turning it around to your praise, to your glory, and to your honor. You said you would do it. Now, I am trusting you. You have the best way, and I enter into your peace and in your rest right now in the name of Jesus. You remind the devil, he's not running nothing up in here. Tell him to get back, get off, and back down in the name of Jesus. He's not running this in the name of Jesus. My father has it. I've given it to him. And he said he would confirm his word with the signs following. Oh, we have such an awesome life that we live. It's such a wonderful, wonderful way to learn how to do things. It's so awesome to know that you're not by yourself. You have a God that truly has your back. He's concerned there again 
very concerned about every area and every aspect of your life. However, he's a gentleman. He will not force his way into your life. But when you say, Father, I'm asking for your help. I'm asking for your wisdom. I'm asking for your guidance in this situation because I just don't know what way to handle it. There again, like I said, then you pray about it and you say, Father, I give this to you by faith. I release it into your hands now. And I enter into your peace. I enter into your rest. And then that peace, there's a peace that comes from God deep down on the inside. It's not going to be in your head, but there's a rest. And that's when you know that you have the answer from him, that peace, his peace that passeth all understanding. It's a supernatural peace that only he gives. Oh, I tell you, it's so awesome to enter into that peace, to enter into that rest. Oh, Lord, and know that he's got you, he's got your back, and all things are working out under his praise, under his glory, and under his honor, because that's the kind of God we serve. Oh, my goodness. You just need to know that and begin to operate it in it, because he's just waiting for us. He, he wants to help you, but he can't force his way. He can't make us do anything until we say, Father, I surrender. I, I give you all, and I'm trusting you. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all, A-L-L, your ways, acknowledge the Father. Then he said, I will direct your paths. He, and then you can send forth those angels. Tell them, angels, I release you. Now go forth and move on the hearts of those of whom I have to do with this day. Make the crooked way straight. Cause those right now to uh, 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 move to the uh, correspond with God's word. I thank you, and I receive it as done now in the name of Jesus. Oh, you watch God. <laughs> you watch God. He said that he would do. Turn with me to Ephesians. The book of Ephesians, chapter number 3. I tell you, that's why this word is just wonderful. So awesome. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> and it's so good. As he said, taste and see Woo! that the Lord is good. Philippians, uh, Ephesians, I'm sorry, Ephesians number three. Uh, and look at verse 20. It says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, oh, my God, there's that little word, all oh, again, that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Ooh, that's awesome. I have to read that one again. Now to him, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, who is able <laughs> to do exceeding, listen to that description, abundantly, Woo! Above all that we ask or even think according to the power that works in us. Now, that's what I'm talking about up in here today. According to the power that works in us. Because why? Greater is he that's on the inside of us than he that's in the world. Oh, glory to God. This is what I'm talking about, family. That's why I get so excited about the word of God. The greater one is dwelling on the inside. You're not a failure creature. And you need to know that. And stop sitting there feeling sorry for yourself. Hallelujah. You tell that devil to get out of here in the name of Jesus. I'm not listening to you in your lies anymore. You have to understand that you are valuable. You are precious. You've been purchased by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he loves you with the everlasting love. He only wants the best for you. Besides that, he's given his best, his only son. Hallelujah. That we would have an opportunity to really live this life victoriously every single day. Not one day, not just on a Sunday, not just on a Tuesday, but every single day, family, we can live the victorious life through what God's word says. Oh, it's awesome. It's so exciting. It's so wonderful. My, 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 my. 
That's the kind of God we serve. Just pray with me. Dear God, according to your word, Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. For with my heart I believe unto righteousness, and with my mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. You prayed that prayer, you are now in the family of God. OCN needs to hear from you. On your screen is an address where you can send your tithes, your gifts of love. We thank you in advance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you need an additional prayer, there's a telephone number that you can call. We are so happy that you were tuned in today. We thank you. So remember, this week is another week of the devil's defeat. Thank you. We'll see you for the next time.